Thank you for considering the Corporate Cowboys podcast. This is another episode, another part in the audiobook of the Hitman Online, a technical manual for independent contractors, originally published 1983 by Paladin Press, written by Rex Farrell. Just a quick warning and disclaimer. It is against the law to manufacture a silencer without an appropriate license from the federal government. There are state and local laws prohibiting the possession of weapons and their accessories in many areas. Severe penalties are prescribed for violations of these laws. Neither the author, nor the publisher, nor myself, the narrator, Alex, assume responsibility for the use or misuse of information contained in this book. It's for informational and educational purposes only. So don't fucking hit me up that you did this and you did that because I said so. I didn't say shit. I'm just narrating it. This is chapter five. Homework and surveillance. Mapping a plan and checking it for accuracy. <clears throat> Homework and surveillance. The absolutely most essential part of any successful operation is accurate information. Even with the finest weapon and the most sophisticated equipment available, without accurate information, you'll be all dressed up with nowhere to go. Or worse yet, you may crash the wrong party. Homework. Only a fool will rush right into a job without doing their homework. You have to know your target, whether it's a job for hire or a personal endeavor. Every scrap of up-to-date information you can gather inconspicuously should be assembled and studied to guarantee the success of your operation. Information requirements will vary depending on the type and difficulty of the job. Even the most minute Seemingly unimportant detail can be just the very item you need. Everything your employer knows, you should know. The best way to gather the necessary facts to plan your job is to use an information sheet as a guideline so nothing will be left out. You can have your employer fill it out themselves, but you will get better information. Once you have a bond of mutual trust and price has been agreed upon, if you ask the questions and fill it out as they supply the information. Until you actually do the job, the information sheet is just harmless data or data, however you pronounce it. <laughs> however, if it falls into the wrong hands and you go ahead with the job, it could very well prove conspiracy. So keep it in a safe place from prying eyes and nosy snoopers. After you do the job, the information sheet, along with any photos, maps, diagrams, house keys, and other paraphernalia will become incriminating evidence linking you to the crime. So memorize and get rid of all your information before you leave to do the job. The best way to rid yourself of this evidence is to burn it all. Crumble the, <laughs> crumble the cooled residue and scatter it in the wind. If you burn it indoors, flush it down the toilet, but make sure you are not near any smoke detectors or you may have company at the most inopportune time. Just see that all this information is done away with in some manner that will inhibit its reconstruction. On the following pages is a sample information sheet to show the depth of the information required to plan an efficient, successful job. Each job will be different, so the categories will carry. So the categories will carry in their importance. That makes sense. Oh no, it doesn't make sense. Each job will be different, so the categories will vary. As I was a typo on the author's part or the publisher's part, because this is an online manual. Each job will be different, so the categories will vary in their importance. For instance, if a man lives alone, it may become important to know. If he has a dog who will bark, warning the owner of your impending intrusion or alerting the neighborhood that something is amiss. 
If a man lives with several other people, however, if a man lives with several other people, however, it may become important to know his regular routine and where he hangs out when he is not at work or at home. Your thinking pattern and technique should be flexible and imaginative. You may want to develop your own information gathering system based on your personal needs and preferences. Using this information complete on the sample form, we come to the following conclusions. And here it leaves a couple of notes. My commentary is just that obviously because this is an audiobook, you won't be seeing anything, even though it says on the next pages or whatever. This information sheet you won't really be able to see, but I'll read you the captions nonetheless. <clears throat> Items 1, 2, 3, 5, and 24 supply physical information to enable positive identification of the mark. Edward Nathan Jones, a.k.a. Eddie or Fat Boy, can be mentally pictured as a middle-aged, overweight man who is more than likely too out of shape to make any positive effort to defend himself against our onslaught. Uh, the description they're giving out is based on a previous little anecdote uh, in the manual. I believe it was chapter one or, or chapter two. Could even could have even been the prologue uh, you want to tune into and listen in on parts one, two, and three of the Hitman technical manual. You can click on the link to listen to those. The picture supplied will help greatly in making a positive identification. However, if the photo were not available, the indicated mole, scar, and habitual cigar would be of great benefit along with the detailed physical description. Items 9 through 20 and 23 give clues to his emotional makeup. Our Mark is basically a loner. He lives alone, has few friends or outside interests, preferring to remain within the confines of his apartment watching TV during his free time. He is a heavy drinker, although he does not abuse any type of drug. The fact that he is a homosexual will preclude the sudden appearance of a girlfriend. It is stated in item 23 that he is afraid of sexual contact of any kind since his brush with the law eight years ago. Let's see. Does it give his age? Because if he's afraid with the law, if he's afraid of the law eight years ago, he might be up to something nefarious. We could just knock him off for that. Or he may be knocked off just for that. He may be just a bit paranoid since he does keep a loaded weapon close at hand in the apartment. His previous fighting ability will, will more than like his previous fighting ability will more than likely pose no threat. His previous fighting ability, there you go, his previous fighting ability will more than likely pose no threat since his excess weight will slow him down considerably and make him short-winded. Items 4, 6, 7, 9, 10, 15, 16, 21, 22, 25, and 26 indicate again that his lifestyle precludes heavy traffic flow at the place where he lives. Although his job is an unimportant one and he drives to and from work alone, a study of the drawings in line, in line, not lines, in items 25 and 26, a study of the drawings in items 25 and 26, as well as the photos provided, make the apartment the initial choice for making the hit. The fact that he does not deal in or partake, the fact that he doesn't, because of typos, my apologies, a lot of the, uh, the, a lot of my mistakes, there you go, mistakes in reading of this manual are are typos and grammatical errors that may have originated originally uh, via the author or the publisher, that being Paladin Press or the online publisher, if it was scanned or dictated uh, before it was published online. So I do apologize in advance. I did try to read beforehand and make a couple of edits, but uh, some of these chapters I do not read in advance and just go with the flow. <clears throat> the fact that he does not deal or partake of illegal drugs 
and that he has no known sexual pastimes show that he will usually be found alone. The absence of burglar alarms or watchdogs would indicate that he feels relatively safe within the confines of his apartment, relying only on his own abilities and the loaded 38 for self-protection. Since his own car is the only one usually present in the reserved parking area, a quick check of the tag numbers should be enough to verify he is alone before you make your move. Items 7, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 20 offer potential methods for making the hit. Item 7 shows that he travels to and from work alone. A well-planned quote-unquote traffic accident or quote-unquote hit and run might be in order or even a well-placed rifle shot from a distance. Item 11 might inspire some other type of accident in the home while the mark is under the influence of the alcohol he is known to drink heavily. Or some really good poison like cyanide might be added to a bottle of wine he has chilling in the refrigerator. The negative responses to items 12, 13, 14, and 15 rule out quote-unquote accidental death due to drug overdose. If he were a drug dealer, a fake ripoff might have been used as the cover, or perhaps he would have indulged in a bad bag of dope. Since he has no dealings with women, item 16 is of little help. A woman would be no use in keeping him occupied or luring him to the spot of your choice. Item 20 might be a good alternative if the mark has a bad heart, the mere presence of a venomous snake in his bed or mailbox might bring out about might bring out might bring about an immediate heart attack. Based on the overall picture, however, quick silent entry and the muffled blast of your 22 is the preferred route. The mark's physical abilities, his emotional makeup, and his lifestyle would indicate that it might be days before any foul play is detected. The layout of the apartment complex and the position of his apartment make it an ideal place to make a hit. The decision has been made. You may have noticed no personal information was requested from the employer as to why he wanted the hit performed. Neither was there any preference. No, neither was because... Uh, never mind, this is mistypes. Neither was there any reference to the employer, his name, or location. It is not necessary for you to know why the employer wants the mark taken out. If he tells you, fine. Otherwise, don't ask. The employer is the judge. You are merely the executioner. Your job, once the information is provided, is to study it to arrive at your own conclusions as to how the job will be accomplished and whether additional information will have to be obtained on your own. Give the employer what he has paid for, the cleanest, most efficient, and professional services possible. Surveillance. Surveillance can be a tedious and sometimes boring part of your job. It can mean sitting in sweltering heat or freezing cold for hours on end while you try not to look conspicuously out of place or draw attention to yourself. It means hoping to gather enough information to put together some ideas of how the mark thinks and acts so you can plan when and how to make your move. When a complete packet of information is supplied by the employer at the time you make the contract. Yeah, when a complete packet of information is supplied by the employer at the time you make the contract, surveillance can be cut down to a few routine checks of places the mark is known to frequent and a couple of runs to establish positive identification and correct addresses. If, for some reason, the employer cannot provide the information required for advanced planning, of course the fee he pays and the expense money advanced will be higher to cover the extra risks and time involved in assuring success of the job. The key here, as always, is discretion. The use of disguises will enable you to move about more freely. It is much more to your advantage that no one recognize your true identity or remember your actual description. Surveillance techniques vary from job to job, 
depending on the area where the mark lives and his personal and social habits. A man in a large city will be much easier to watch or tag than a man in a small town or rural community. In the city, you blend with the crowd and the crowd tends to mind its own business. In a small area, an outsider will immediately inspire curiosity. In a small area, an outsider will immediately inspire curiosity. I kind of coined a term, just a commentary. I kind of coined a term, coined a concept. Uh, it's urban camouflage. Urban camouflage. Obviously, folks, uh, most folks are aware of what camouflage is in general. Uh, it could be from pattern to camouflage to, uh, to out backland or battleland camouflage. Where... Uh, you you add you add material to your clothing and, and uh, similar to a, like a ghillie suit uh, and, and camouflage you blend in with the environmental settings around you but there is also an urban component to camouflage where you aren't going to blend in to the environmental setting you're going to blend into a social setting want to keep in mind that urban camouflage requires a bit of knowledge of the social makeup of an area for you to blend in adequately. And that does entail wardrobe. It does entail uh, mannerisms. It entails uh, having knowledge, acquiring knowledge of behaviors, of social behaviors in an environment. That is urban camouflage. And that requires homework. That requires homework being done right. And you have to take it upon yourself. This isn't something that I can just assign to you as your professor. One must take the initiative on their own, take up the initiative on their own, study the environment they seek to infiltrate, and get to work. In some places... An unusual car parked on the roadside with a lone man sitting behind the wheel for an extended period of time may have terrified mothers reporting its presence to the authorities. In other places, the same man could sit in the same car all day and no one would give him a second glance. The object is to check the conditions that exist on each particular job before you formulate your plan. No matter how high your IQ or how sharp your weapon skills, if you lack basic common sense, you won't make it as a professional in this field. One fellow I know accepted a contract on an old country boy who was known to be a big drug dealer. The mark was always on the move and never in one place at the same time twice. He's a fucking smart guy. <laughs> And traffic at the Mark's home was heavy, moving in and out in a steady stream. The hitman followed the Mark for several days and never could establish the proper time or place to make a quiet hit. Finally, in frustration, he got into his quote-unquote good old country boy outfit and knocked on the Mark's front door. Charlie round, the hitman drawled as he spat a mouth of chew on the ground. Nah, he ain't here, came the reply. Reckon I could catch him over at Pete's bar, our friend inquired as he bent to wipe the dust from his cowboy boots. This motherfucker's moving a lot. We're trying to make an introduction. Maybe later. He's out at the packing house right now, the young man informed him. I expect him to come back by here about five or six o'clock. Thank you much, our friend said, tipping his hat politely. Just tell him Clyde stopped by and I'll be seeing him later. Back in his pickup truck, quote-unquote Clyde, drove to the packing house he had surveyed earlier. He knew it was a cover for transporting the drugs cross-country. The decision now was whether to hit the mark here or wait until later when he was known to be visiting Pete's bar. Luckily, there was a vacant parking spot to the left of the mark's car. He turned the radio on and country music filled the air. Leaning his head back against the seat, he pulled his hat down to cover his eyes as though he were napping. He was still in that position when the unsuspecting Mark bent to unlock his car 45 minutes later. 
The muffled sound of three shots. Pat, pat, pat. So the mark's head went unnoticed by the workers in the packing house. The body was not discovered until several hours later when the shift ended. By then, our friend was safely miles away. A difficult hit had been successfully completed. If you expect your surveillance to entail tedious hours of watching and waiting, there are some things you can do to make yourself more comfortable during that time. If it is cold out, dress warmly and carry a blanket to cover yourself so you won't have to run the car to keep the heater going. Pack a thermos of coffee or cold drinks and food and some food so you won't have to leave your position when you get hungry. Bring a portable radio or cassette player so you won't drain your car battery. <laughs> Yo, this, this shit was written in the 80s, all right? Don't judge. They had cassette players back then. Nowadays, you could do um, an MP3 player, some some type of uh, uh, device to keep you busy, but while remaining aware. Don't bring... Yeah, there you go. There you go. Don't bring any reading material. You can't watch and read, although a newspaper may be used as a prop, although a book or a newspaper may be used as a prop to fill the time you can check out books on cassette from the library and listen while you watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So books on cassette, books on CD, books on fucking VHS. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, jokes aside, comment. Uh, yeah, have a have a good have a good MP3 player, something that'll keep you uh, aware. You can you could dub, be double dipping on the job. You could be learning and uh, actively working at the same time. Obviously, you do not want to distract yourself by uh, delving into a book, becoming engrossed in reading a book and, and not paying attention to what you're supposed to be doing. Obviously, for obvious reasons and uh, very uh, ob for obviousness, don't uh, use your phone because your phone is a marker and if your marker shows up in a place where somebody else's marker gets turned out... Um, Continuing, fill your tank before you start out. You never know when the mark may be on the move, and many a tail has been lost because the tank ran out before the marks did. If you can afford them and are able to get inside to plant them, quarter-sized bugging devices are now available that will pick up conversation up to two miles away on an unused radio frequency. The bugs can be planted inside the house, and inside a frequently worn jacket, inside of the car, and so on, giving you the leverage of knowing what is going on from a perfectly legitimate spot within a two-mile radius. Binoculars, infrared photography, starlight scopes, and bugging devices all have their time and place. Unfortunately, nothing will ever replace the basic sit-and-watch technique. At night... Perhaps circumstances will allow you to approach a little closer to take a peek and even go inside for a preliminary investigation. But don't ever take risks gathering information that may not be necessary. Use common sense. Remember these important rules. If, for any reason, you can be placed at the job site by witnesses, scratch that job for l <laughs> If, for any reason... You can be placed at the job site by witnesses, scratch that job for a later time, or eliminate it altogether. Uh, eliminate the job or witnesses? Elim uh, no, yeah, no, eliminate the job. Eliminate it altogether. It, it being the job because it said witnesses. Scratch that job for a later time or eliminate it altogether. There we go. If you are working out of town and get a traffic ticket, Call the job off. If you are doing surveillance and the cops come to check out your reason for loitering in the area, call the job off because these uh these <laughs> these caps because the cops usually whenever they make a stop or whenever they stop their own movement, they log that stop uh, before even stepping out of the car. So as soon as they're at your window, you're burned. If you run into a neighbor or repairman while you are snooping around the Mark's house, call the job off. Don't let any little detail link you to the victim.
And this concludes chapter five of Hitman Online, a technical manual for independent contractors. Thank you very much for considering the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Visit us on Instagram. Keep this operation nonprofit. Shoot us a donation. You're a smart individual. You're you're intelligent. You're reasonable. You can find the links. You can also follow us on Patreon and subscribe. Have a nice one.